The powerful words and the stirring melody of Kul Nidre are perhaps the greatest, the most moving of the entire liturgy of the Jewish people. Every year as Yom Kippur begins, and the Chazan begins to intone and recite those words and that tune of Kul Nidre, I'm moved. I can feel it actually going into my very soul, into my bones. But what is the power behind Kul Nidre? What exactly does it mean? And why is it that the evening of Yom Kippur has become associated with Kul Nidre? If we look more closely at Kol Nidre, we will see something quite interesting. Kol Nidre is not a tefillah, it's not a prayer. It's not a bakasha. We're not asking for anything from God. It's not a shevach. It's not a praise of God. Kol Nidre is a legal declaration that we hereby cancel and annul all of the vows and oaths that we will make during the year. Why do we start the holiest day of the year with this legal declaration? And perhaps the mystery behind Kul Nidre can be explained as follows. For the next 24 hours on Yom Kippur, we are going to be praying. We're going to be saying a lot of words. We're going to be saying sorry to God for the wrong that we've done. We're going to be saying the vidui, the confession, many, many times. We're going to be reading the Torah twice, once in the morning, once in the afternoon. We're going to be reading the Haftarah twice, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. We're going to be saying Kaddish many times, the Kedusha, the sanctification of God's name, many prayers and many poems for almost a full day. And therefore, we need to have an appreciation of what words mean. And this is Kol Nidre. <laughs> We begin the holiest day of the year with this legal declaration because what in effect Kul Nidre is saying to us is consider the power of words. You can take a neder, a shvur, a vow and an oath. You can create a new prohibition, a new responsibility just by words. Words are not meaningless. Words are incredibly powerful. And therefore you who are about to fast and pray on Yom Kippur, consider the power of your words because that's how you're going to be addressing, coming before God with words. Don't think that words are not powerful. This is a message that is timeless and certainly applicable in our generation, where information travels 
around the world in a split second. Words, words, and more words. Words that can hurt. Words that can cause abuse. Words that can even get people killed. Words that can end lives. And therefore we need to appreciate the power of words. So on Yom Kippur we begin the holiest day of the year by being told, Kol Nidre. These are the oaths. These are the words. This is the power of your words. Use your words properly. Use your words to uplift people, to inspire people, to motivate people, to show sympathy with people, to show that you care about other people. This is the power of words, and this is the power of Yom Kippur. I wish you all a Gemar Chatimatova. May you be inscribed in the Book of Life. Love.